Howdy y'all, it's Aaron here. I hope you're doing well. Need effective ways to grow your clothing store without breaking the bank? In this episode, I'm gonna share with you some of the best free marketing strategies for your clothing store. As always, make sure that you grab something to take notes with and stick around until the end where I'm gonna share with you how to generate real sales with these strategies. The term influencer has been used a lot lately, but we're still only scratching the surface with the possibilities. Using someone else's already trusted audience to share your brand is a unfair, huge unfair advantage. The problem is that although the concept is easy to understand, most people really mess up the execution, which is what I'm gonna help you with today. First, I want you to make a list of 100 people that you can find on Instagram, people who line up with your brand and have a following of less than 10,000 people. Half of the half should be between two to 5,000 followers. One of the biggest mistakes some people make is going after larger influencers, limiting the amount of total influencers, total people, you will be able to use. This is a volume play. So the goal here is to get 25 to 30 of these influencers to say yes. I suggest that you send over a personalized video or audio message to them on Instagram after, and I mean after you spend one to two weeks engaging with their Instagram stories, commenting on their posts, and liking their content. When you find smaller influencers, it is much easier for them to notice you. Reach out to them with a compelling offer. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you're going to offer them here in a second. All right, so number one thing you are going to give them is free merch, obviously. Number two is 100% of the sales that they generate. Yes, 100% of the sales that they generate with their code. The only catch that you ask is if they like your product, that they share it with their audience on social, whether it's a post, whether it's a story, whatever it is, right? You want an actual honest review. That's the only catch that you have. The reason that you want to do this, right? And a lot of people are like 100% of the sales. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit later. The point here is that you need to get it in front of as many people as possible. That's it, rinse and repeat. In another video, we can talk about the economics of how this is scalable and extremely profitable for you. But run the numbers on your end and you'll start to see what I'm talking about. Consider these things, how much a customer is worth to you out of the gate, right? So like today, how much is that customer worth to you? Number two, how much they are worth to you over the next 90 days? And how much does it cost you to send that product to the influencer? If you have those things in mind, you're gonna have everything that you need to make a educated decision of what you send that influencer and when you become profitable. All right, before we cover another free marketing strategy, I just wanted to say howdy. My name is Aaron. I'm one of the co-founders here at Bitbranding, and we're an e-commerce growth agency that specializes in helping clothing stores like you scale profitably online. Now, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of the latest strategies for your clothing stores. We drop new content every single week. All right, so number two, SEO. Search engine optimization, that's the way that it used for the acronym, is so powerful and yet everyone thinks that it is dead, much like they did with email and SMS. Are you using email and SMS right now? If you're not, you should definitely do that. When everyone else is zigging, try to zag just a little bit. Imagine being able to rank for top terms in your industry, beating out the competition in an area they are not using. To be honest, after hundreds of calls and conversations with clothing stores, not one of them was doing anything remotely with their SEO. Some of them ranked a little bit, but it wasn't because of intention, it was by happenstance. Now, here's some basics to start with for your business. Better product descriptions, better product pages, rich with content, start writing a blog, even just once per month, getting more reviews on Google. There are so many other things, actually I think that there's close to 72 different ways that you can actually rank online, but just start here, or start there, just start doing something. All right, so number three is to be different. This may seem obvious, but honestly, it's not because most people blend in. I do wanna walk you through some examples of brands and stores that are standing out, but what you'll see is that most people never stand out. Let me hopefully paint a picture for you. Imagine we are all invited to a cocktail party for a special event. Everyone is asked to wear black and white. What most people do to try to stand out is to come up with a really nice black or white attire. They wear something that's better but they blend in because better doesn't get noticed. What if you showed up in a gray suit? Still classy, but definitely different. More people would notice you. They would ask more questions. They would assume things, etc. But you stood out. 
Your customers can't buy from you if they don't know you exist. We ignore what becomes normal. That's why they changed the way that sirens and lights go off on police cars. We all became desensitized to the situation that we would unknowingly ignore them. If people can ignore sirens, literally loud yelling sirens, it likely means they are ignoring your marketing. Different gets noticed. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just like my example of the black tie affair, it could be gray. You don't have to do something that's extravagant. Different just means literally different. If something is the status quo or a normal, then just do a little bit of a tweak of that. That's different. Don't fall into the, this is what everybody's always done scenario, because then you will get what everyone has already gotten. And really it'll probably be worse only because everybody else is already doing it and you're behind. So don't overcomplicate this step. All right, so I also wanna jump into uh, the computer here. Let's jump in there. Uh, I wanna show you some examples of brands that are standing out because again, the standing out part uh, can be a little bit difficult. Even coming up for this video, it was like, okay, what is actually standing out? And when we see thousands of advertisements every single day and we're spending so much time on the internet, it's like we really have to figure out a way to stand out and it will help you grow. So let's go over here to one that I know you are very familiar with, which is the Snuggie. Uh, so Snuggie was literally, I mean, everybody was selling Sherpas and just selling blankets and everything else, but the Snuggie, what they did was they were like, okay, we're gonna add some arms inside of this blanket and a hole down at the bottom for your feet. So you literally can just wear a blanket. But then they went over the top with like the, I don't know when this came out, like maybe the 90s or early 2000s, but like over the top, like, oh, let's have our whole family here or let's work on our computer or drink coffee or whatever else. And so they had several videos um, or like the as seen on TV uh, commercials that went viral. And so now everybody knows about a Snuggie. Since then, they tried to be duplicated. They tried to, like so many other brands tried to copy them, but it was more so a fad than it was a trend. Now the site is still up. They still sell on Amazon. I'm sure they're still selling quite a bit because it's it's needed. It's an oversized length. It looks here like they said the, oh, buy 50, get 50% 50 off. So they're, they're probably not doing as well, but it's still sticking around. And more than anything, they ran an ad that is now, at this point, stood out it's now become the status quo and so everybody else is doing something similar or they created a similar product and it's not going to do as well um, but they did stand out and made something different the next one here is something that's different where it's not necessarily a clothing item but they did stand out so they created a video that you're probably very familiar with we'll put it on the screen here which is a unicorn taking a poop in its ice cream and everybody on the internet has probably seen this video if you have not go check that out after you finish this video go check that out but they they sold a product called the squatty potty which is amazing i own the product it's really cool but as you can see really blank boring site um it's got reviews it's got all the things you'd want to be able to purchase the product but what they did with their marketing was completely stand out they flipped it on its head they took a boring industry from people who uh, really wanted to sell like the ergonomics and like how healthy it was and they flipped it on its head and said no we're going to create something that's much more appealing to everybody that's actually shareable and the content was hilarious um, it entertained us it also educated us and so that video still probably brings in millions of dollars per year for this brand so go check them out if you haven't yet and like i said this is my endorsement for squatty potty i do not get paid to say that all right next up here is uh chubbies they haven't in my opinion they haven't i haven't seen anything from them um, recently but about two three years ago they they ran several videos several ads and i'll try to pull it up on the screen here too and find those that went viral where they had these amazing shorts and it was just like this american lifestyle and it was like go to the lake hang out with your bros, drink beer, do all of these fun things. And it was just a fun viral video and it stood out. All they are is a swimwear brand that happens to stand out. But their shorts, um, before anybody else was really doing it, were really cool designs, whether it had Paris on it or peacocks or flamingos. They were crazy vibrant colors and crazy loud, different um, designs. And now that's become more even I feel like more people are doing that, but this was the brand that really kind of pushed it forward with one of their viral videos to help stand out and give themselves a boost online. And then last, the most probably common one that you have heard of, this is a brand that decided to uh, give away 
a large portion of their products and donate to a cause, right? So this was like, Tom's was probably one of the first philanthropic brands out there doing this and also was different, right? You never heard of a shoe company. You never heard of Nike or Adidas. Every, for every Nike or Adidas you bought, you gave away a shoe, it didn't work that way. Tom's, what they said is, for every shoe that we have, we're gonna give one shoe to a country in need. And what happened is this company blew up. It's worth billions of dollars. Um, and there's also stuff out there what people say about Tom's anyway. But the point is, um, they stood out, they got the PR, they got the press, and they still do it to this day. And it's what makes them different. People have tried to duplicate, but you don't hear me talking about anybody else because nobody really else stands out. So they did something different. Um, my point for this video or for this section of the video is that you don't have to do anything crazy but if you do something like this where you're able to stand out you're able to take up market share and then just continue to add on that to help you grow your business before we jump into number four and one of the best ways for you to grow your clothing store i wanted to tell you about our free masterclass training for clothing stores that will walk you through the five pillars that must be in place five for your online store to scale consistently and profitably no matter what is happening in the world. So if you want access to that free training, make sure you check the link down in the description below. All right, so number four is to become a media company first. You have to build an engaged audience before you sell a product. Creating or buying the product, then trying to build an audience is what most everyone tells you to do, but most businesses actually fail. Start creating content to help you stand out in your space. It really comes down to where your audience is at online and then creating value for them. Are they on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Meta? Do they read blogs? Do they listen to podcasts? Do they watch YouTube videos like this? One thing about messaging is that there are ways to be more effective. Let me walk you through those over on the iPad so that you can be thinking of the type of content you can create. All right, so there's basically three different types of pieces of content, maybe even a fourth if you wanna throw it in here that we need to talk about and this is far beyond what's gonna go into the depth of this video, but I just wanna talk surface level of like what you can be doing to help stand out because it is very powerful. Um, but we are not going in depth and I'll give credit where credit is due. So um, there is a guy who's come up with the concept here. His uh, name is Brandon Lucero, so go check that out. He has a whole messaging um, course about how to create content. So basically what we're gonna go through are the three different types of videos that are at least most popular at this point and that is number one um, is a thought reversal so your messaging here really just needs to be something that can break through what everybody else is talking about what everybody else is doing we'll talk about here in a second but the thought reversal is video number one that you should be typing or trying to create and you may have even seen us do it on this channel which is to stop doing certain things or to quit doing certain things or whatever it is so we're trying to take the common misconceptions in the world of our industry and flip it on its head because they are not always true. So what he's saying here is that if something is not 100% true, then it leaves it up for interpretation or it leaves it up for an opportunity to bring something out, right? We know, for example, that this desk is white. You probably can't see it. The desk is white and it's hard that is 100% true. But whether or not Michael Jordan is better than LeBron, we would argue that Michael is better, but some people would argue that it could be LeBron. And the point is that if it's not 100% true and there's room for a gap there, then you could actually argue one way or better, uh, or another rather. So whether it's Nike, whether it's Adidas, whether it's a Yeezy or whatever else that you are selling, if there is room for interpretation, you can change the way that you message or the way that you um, tell people to perceive that message. So the thought reversal is content that flips common misconceptions on its head and you're able to talk about it in depth. And the reason this is important is because you are being shown as a thought leader because it's something that's new, it's different, and what happens is if you are using different terminology or different ways to stand out, you're gonna cut through a lot more of the fluff than anyone else is going to be. All right, so thought reversal, like I said, this is gonna challenge the common misconceptions. This is gonna challenge the way that the status quo, this is how you are different, why other people are going to interact with you and at least draws them in. The second piece of content that you need is a connection. So for you here, 
for watching this video, you have to connect with us on some level, whatever that may be to be able to be drawn in, not just finding out information, right? So Christian and I started this company, we're a marketing agency, uh, maybe you started a business with your business partner, or you realize that we're married, and so you're like, oh, okay, they're married, or we have kids, and so you're related, and well, okay, we're kids, or you found out that I was a runner, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna run, I like him because he runs, whatever. You have to figure out what that piece is, that connection, so that you can create something with your audience to get them to draw in. That is a big piece of the messaging here. Connection videos do not have to be, hey, we did a whole video on here about why I run or anything like that, but it can be subtle drops throughout videos or time of, hey, this is our wives, or this is our kid, or this is you know the sports or the activities or the things that we do that are related, right? So some people may relate to Christian because they're like, oh, he's from Puerto Rico. They may relate from me because they're like, oh, I'm actually from Kansas, or you guys may be relating to us because we're in the Dallas area. I actually just talked to a lady uh, last week who was like, oh, I found you guys on YouTube and then found out you're 30 minutes away. I want to work with you. Um, so it, it happens all of the time. So you have to create that connection. That's the second piece. The third one is what everybody starts with. And what happens is it's the hardest one to really break out in. And that's that how to or that what to do videos. So we do those kinds of content, right? Which is how to do something, how to grow your clothing store, how to add meta fields to your Shopify store. Like we do that type of content or create that type of content. But this one is the hardest area to grow in because it's what everyone else is doing too. It's still necessary, still should be a big part of what you're doing, but it's not something that's going to just continue to catapult you unless you find a different way to do your how-to videos. For example, if I did it from inside of an airplane every time, you'd probably think that was interesting and you'd be drawn in um, from that. But most people don't do it that way. They just sit in front of a camera and talk to you about how to or what to do videos um, and you don't get as much of the personality side. So those three types of videos are what will help you stand out online and cut through a lot of that fluff. The fourth piece here, and probably the bonus one anyway, is more of like a vlog style or like a storytelling. Uh, this is also like what you see people doing through Instagram stories or through reels or through TikTok. And this style of content is very engaging because everybody wants to know what other people are doing as far as like, like there's a very popular trend right now on TikTok and like Instagram Reels is like, get ready with me, right? Like, hey, I'm getting my, I'm putting on my makeup or I'm putting on my shoes or I'm getting ready to go out for a run. Like this is how I get ready in the morning and people just wanna be flies on the wall. So it's a very popular trend and you could do that through storytelling via stories or, or like I said, Instagram Reels or a TikTok and that, or even through a YouTube video and that would be very popular and, and allow you to stand out as well. At the time of this video, if you're watching it in 2026, that may not be the trend that's going on, so you may not be able to use it, but use it as a baseline of how to use uh, content to help yourself stand out. Hey guys, don't worry about choosing all five of these strategies. Pick one or two and start getting to work. Remember, progress over perfection. Now, once you start to drive a lot of traffic, then you'll need a solution to help you make sense of your data. I wanted to let you on a major secret that is helping us give more data back to Facebook and almost every single other tool. This is what we use inside of our agency for our clients and for our group coaching members to get better results and make better marketing decisions, especially if there's a down economy or things are changing. We're using a tool called TripleWell and this powerhouse allows us to see the LTV or lifetime value for a customer over 30, 60, and 90 days. But what's most exciting about this is the estimated action of the customers. Meaning, if somebody is likely to make a purchase in the next 30, 60, or 90 days, how can we send out a message, whether it's an ad or an SMS or an email, to get that person to take an action faster? And we have that data inside of TripleWell. It's a super powerful tool. They have an amazing website that tells you how to basically use what they're, what they're providing for you. If you wanna learn more about TripleWell, make sure you check out the link in the description down below. Wish you all nothing but success right now. And if you like this video and you're ready to learn more about growing your clothing store, watch this one next. All right, y'all have a great rest of your day.